The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. So here, today we're talking about, uh, as Eric mentioned, uh, the packing in general, but I'm specifically here going to speak about the aggregate packing, the experimental results, uh, how we can pack the aggregates, what methods can we use, uh, what are the best models to use uh, as far as I've been able to research, uh, and uh, also how we, can, how we can compare experimental results to uh, models and take the most advantage of them. Uh, the outline of presentation would be, well, I'm going to talk about the properties of the aggregate, uh, the experimental method we've used for packing aggregate in the lab, and then uh, the models that are responding to those data. Also, we're going to talk about uh, too far and A model and compare them to the experimental data. And then uh, we're going to spend some time finding, talking about what is the actual blend, uh, considering our criteria would be packing of aggregate and uh, continuous grading. Uh, there are other factors that we're not going to talk about in this presentation. So the problem is Wisconsin DOT is interested in reducing cement content by 10%. Currently, they're using uh, about 520 to 565 pounds per cubic yard. Uh, that's what they're typically, that's what the spec is talking about. And then, well, they also like to meet the, the, the requirements for workability, for uh, opening traffic uh, in a short time, and then durability. The reason we're doing this, this, this concentration on aggregate packing is uh, the previous research they accomplished, they showed the mixtures uh, that was developed in the, in the, in the, in the research did not sh did show uh, poor workability. And uh, there was no attention to optimizing the aggregate blend. And then uh, many, many of the mixtures that was using supplementary mixtures material had low, low uh, strength. We have to consider that if you want to use supplementary mixtures material with such a low cement content of 280, uh, we have to work on aggregate packing to get the most uh, strength. Uh, so therefore, we need to run uh, aggregate optimization. Well, this would be for concrete pavements, obviously, and uh, like I said, we're going to talk about experimental, and theoretical, and uh, packing models, and then we're talking about continuous uh, power curves. So there are two types of aggregates used in this research. Uh, the southern aggregate, southern Wisconsin aggregate, they're uh, all crushed aggregate. And then there's northern, which are basically uh, round aggregate for the coarse and then crushed for intermediate, and then crushed for the fine. The in the experimental matrix, we have packed uh, all those different combinations of aggregate between 0 to 100. And then uh, that's what we have used for, for our results. So uh, north, the southern aggregate have been limestone. These are the properties. And then the northern aggregate, uh, we can see that uh, F1, southern aggregate, is slightly finer than the F2. And the intermediate for south, southern aggregate was, was not actually, is, is not actually intermediate. It's, it's more towards the coarse versus this one has uh, more, uh, is more fine. And then there's difference in uh, Dmax in two of those. Uh, which is a slightly, or actually no, they're both uh, one inch. This is the method we've used for experimental packing. Well, there are too many different methods. Uh, there's a broad compact, rod compaction. You can use vibration of different times. You can use uh, vibration and compaction. And well, Dullard and other people have talked about packing index and then how how packing index affect the virtual packing. Uh, but in the lab, you need to have some sort of easy experiment. So if you, if you take VB machine, which, are, which is being used for uh, finding the consistency of RCC pavements, and then use that for packing, uh, you can actually compare loose packing, which is before compacting them, and then uh, compacted packing, and find out if the loose packing and compacted packing have different influence on concrete or not. Uh, so the method is being used is uh, just pouring, 
at, at any combination we've had, and then, uh, which is called loose packing, and then vibrating for 45 seconds and compaction, we found this to be the most consistent time to pack the aggregate. So here what you're seeing is, if you plot all these together, and uh, it's being plotted, the packing density is, is being plotted versus fine fraction, uh, you get about 10% higher, higher more, uh, more packing between, 10 per, between uh, binary mixtures, which is this one purple, which, with a zero intermediate, to 10%, which is the green one. And you see the same trend uh, in both southern and northern aggregate, but you still see a little bit higher uh, packing in the southern aggregate, which might be due to uh, that, the fact that the southern aggregate has been crushed limestone, which, as Eric mentioned earlier, your cr crushed, li crushed aggregate will give you higher packing, but that might not be beneficial for workability. Uh, obviously, these packings are far away from the practical uh, limits. You get like 70, 60 percent of fine if you want to reach your maximum packing for southern, and then you get uh, 50 to 60 percent uh, fine if you want to reach, but you obviously cannot reach that in the field. If you plot the ternary diagrams and compare the binary, compare the loose packing and compacted packing, they correlate to each other but it doesn't mean that necessarily they, they correlate uh, the, same, uh, with the same way uh, if you compare them to, to the concrete mixtures being produced with these uh, aggregate combinations. But uh, what we see here in the compacted uh, ternary diagram, you see 10% of your immediate is showing highest packing with low fraction of fine aggregates. This being verified later by concrete mixtures. I'm going to talk about it later. And then if you look at loose packing, you actually slightly see that which you still see that it's between 0 to 10%, uh, and then that's your packing. Your, your packing will be different, differ between, I guess, 55 to 78 uh, for, for compacted, and then you're, you will be having about 10 to 15%, uh, you'll be having 10 to 10 to 15% lower uh, packing degree for loose packing. And this is basically the model that is, uh, it's a response model based on the actual experimental data. Uh, you can see the, Again, here, the packing degree versus experimental degree, the, the predicted packing degree of the model. And uh, what you see here is the R square is, is relatively high, is, is really high for both of them. There are some points that doesn't fit into the model, but uh, the, the correlation is still high, which, uh, which means we can basically uh, rely on, on linear regression models uh, later if you don't want to use the experiment. Here, if you want to talk about uh, models, I found these, these two models to be kind of uh, relatively practical to use. Uh, the difference between these two, they're both based on furnace model, but the difference is uh, the A model takes into account the interaction of large particles of packing, uh, large particles on packing of a smaller particles, and they both have dominant, it's called dominant, uh, dominant uh, aggregate. So after a certain amount of fine fraction, it says, uh, it, it changed the equation from uh, a, a coarse dominant or a fine, fine dominant uh, mixture. And then it also described that it's looking for the, uh, for the packing, not the, not the grading here. But the TUFAR model, it used three experimental values to, to, to build the model, which is the diameter ratio of the particle. We're talking about binary mixtures here. From cor whatever, coarser to finer ratio, it's the diameter ratio, and then the probability of number of, in, uh, number of interstices between the coarse particle, which is come as a factor into equation, and then it also looking for packing. Well, modified to four model, as mentioned in the previous uh, presentations, makes a slight change based on assumption that not all the coarse particle, uh, but not that not uh, every fine particle is being surrounded by exactly four particles, which is initially being uh, assumed in two far model. So here, if you plot our experimental data versus uh, too far an A model, here's what you get. If you compare coarse and here coarse and fine in the southern aggregate, your maximum packing will be at like 70, as we showed before. But the model is showing us it's about 50 to 55 percent. So you get like 10, 15 percent consistently in all of these four uh, at your highest packing. But that's not what you what you're really interested. In, what you really is what would be your practical how different they are at practical ranges that you can technically use. And then you see the same trend. You get higher packing in the northern, in the northern aggregate, which is, which is uh, the reason for that is that your fine aggregate is, uh, uh, your C2 is round. So 
that that obviously gives you uh, that's 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 the reason you get higher packing. And then uh, if you look at intermediate and fine, you still see the same trend. The model is giving you higher higher packing, but the difference is not that much. Like you have 75 to 78 here at at the maximum. The number of the packing is the same, but the but it happens at a different fine fraction. Um, briefly talking about virtual packing, this is a tool. Right now we talk about discrete models and experiments, but here it's a random, it's a real world distribution of particles. Well, it's assumed that all the particles are sphere, and then it uh, basically uh, it can be run in 2D or 3D with a limited number of particles for 2D and then unlimited, well, you can go up to 20, 100 million uh, particles for 3D. And then what it does, it, it, it asks you at what rate you want to reduce the diameter of your, your particles and at what rate you want to reduce the spacing within your particles and what do you want your initial spacing within your particles to be set at. And if you introduce those and then it, it asks you for the number of particles as well and uh, how many trials you want, you want the program, you want the algorithm to run to be able to fit next aggregate within the previously packed aggregate. Uh, and if you do that, you, you get, uh, you get uh, gradings like that for 2D, for like limited number of aggregates, and then for kind of unlimited to 10 uh, million aggregates. And then you can compare those to ASTM. What this does for you is a tool, instead of running, uh, you know, unlimited number of uh, experiments, you can play with those and get to real world aggregate gradation and compare those to whatever you want to compare it to. So if you, if you compare these two, which has been produced with the virtual packing uh, algorithm, uh, you see the fit one and fit two, you see the parameters here uh, as fit one and fit two, then the five million particles are being used, these coefficients are being used, and then you get 78 and 74 packing uh, as output. But if you compare these two to these two real world mixtures uh, with 40 and 35% fine aggregate, you get 70 and 68 in the lab. Like I said, it's not, a, it's not very far, but what, what it shows you, and you compare it to, to power curve, it tells you how off you are from the power curve. With fit one and fit two, you are off by, uh, your best fit would be 0.5 and 0.63, versus, the experiment, versus in the experiment, your best fit would be 0.44 and 0.64. So it also tells you for the, for the lowest standard deviation, you can get what would be your best fit. But this is not part of the virtual packing. This is, this is something that we're comparing, that, that we're like representing how you can compare virtual packing to the experiment and use that. Well, here I just wanted to, to show what, mix, what, what would be the best aggregate plan. Using southern aggregate and northern aggregate, 50% uh, for southern aggregate, 50% fine, 10% intermediate, and 40% this orange one here. 50% fine, 10% or 40, this one right here, this, this orange, is being used, which is located between 0 0.35 to 0, to 0 0.5, which is close to that best fit we showed in the previous slide. So if you, take, if you take that as a practical limit, again, you run those packing, you can't get the highest, you still have to decide on what would be your practical uh, aggregate plan. If you take that, and then for, for northern aggregate, 40% uh, fine, 10% uh, intermediate and 50% course, the other one below it is being used. So, again, running the, those experiments on model tells you 10% intermediate help you figure it out, uh, help, help you finding the best blend, which, which we have done. So 10% is being used because of that. And southern aggregate mixtures is being produced with a water sensor issue 0 0.6, the volume of aggregate is held constant as 0.69, Northern aggregate is being produced with a different water symmetry issue with a still closely uh, similar volume of aggregates. What you see here is interesting. You get highest packings, high, uh, highest compressive stress is happening at 60% fine, and uh, at binary, 50% fine at ternary with 10%, 50% fine at 20, and then 50% at 30. So these are the maximums happening here. You get 27 for binary, but if you increase that, if, if you replace 10% of your course ID with intermediate, you get 31 to 30 uh, compressive strength. This is, 
comparing these to practical mixers they use in the field, such as 60-40, like 60, 60 coarse, 40 fine, that they get 25, you can go up to 31. You get 7, seven MPA more, uh, 7 uh, compressive strength, 7 MPA more compressive strength, where you're talking about a, a mixture, a, a low cement content mixture that is 20 to 30 MPA at uh, 28 days. Well, there's no admixtures using these mixtures, and then uh, these are all plain. That's why you see the, these high slump over there. Uh, and then uh, still, you see that this, uh, for, for southern aggregate, you still see you get maximum at binary at 33, but, it, but it, if you use 10%, you're, close, you're very close to 32.4. So I want to go back to, I want to go back to this slide and talk about these numbers. For Southern Aggregate, you get 31.3 at, uh, this, is your, this is your compressive strength that you get at 60% fine. And you get 28. As you go down in your maximum packing, your compressive strength is dropping. And then if you look at binary, your maximum is happening at 27.8, which is exactly at the same point as your maximum uh, of your packing degree. And then if you go down, your compressive strength goes back to 25.7, which is expected. And then the same, the same trend happens, but if you pay attention, here you get uh, 28.1 at 40%, but that's not where your maximum uh, compressive strength is happening for binary. It's happening at 0.5%. And then for 10%, for, for 10 you get 32.4, which is a... Which is, which is a Ternary mix, right here. And then if you go to uh, 20 and 30 percent, you're obviously your compressive strength is dropping. So what we're seeing here, there is a correlation between packing and compressive strength. Taking this into account, you can go from a regular mix to a optimized blend, just using aggregate packing criteria and and continuous grading, uh, and you can increase your compressive strength between 15 to 30 percent. You can also drop your, well, this is already at a low cement content of uh, less than what they're typically using, which is, uh, which is about like I showed in the previous slide. So here, we can go down to 20. This is all these mixtures being produced with 280 kilogram per cubic meter or 470 pounds per cubic yard. So you, you actually can, can, can reduce your cement content and still be within the spec as far as compressive strength. Aggregate packing then can be used as an effective criteria for uh, aggregate optimization, especially when you're talking about low slump, low cement content, concrete. Two, uh, the, the models can be used versus experiments, but you have to be careful where it is happening at, uh, where, where your maximum packing is happening, at what fine content is happening, and how far you are off uh, from the experimental packing. And then you can use continuous gradings, but you have to know what is actually, what, what power curve? Is it 0.45, is it 0.35? It depends on the application, as, as Eric mentioned before. And then we, you have to know how far, how, what is the deviation from that grading. And you have to play with your aggregate blends to figure, figure that out. I guess I conclude my presentation right here. Well, thank Go you ahead.